Welcome everybody. This is the Thursday evening Viper trading webinar. If you're here to learn about trading the financial markets using the Viper tools, you are absolutely in the right place. Uh, we have to get our standard disclaimer out of the way before we get on to the webinar itself. And uh, we want to talk about today's topic is trade, excuse me, trade management after entry. So we're going to, we're going to mix it up. We're going to look at a couple of things. We're going to look at uh, both the trade entries. I, obviously, you can't look at trade management after the entry until we discuss the entries. So it goes without saying that we are going to look at entries too, obviously. And um, uh, and then we'll also talk about managing the trades, you know, after uh, after you get in. So without further ado, let's knock out our disclaimer and we can get straight away onto some charts. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures and Forex trading does involve risk, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar. Other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. Uh, of course, everybody here does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. And um, if you have any questions, let us know. Okay, good. Let me get over to a, uh, I'm going to start off tonight with uh, YM. We affectionately call her Weimer in the room. And I'm going to switch to screen one right now. I'll stand by. Now, in this first part of the webinar, I'm, I'm going to, you know, what I would like to do is is go through some things together and then we'll go more into the exercises where we'll talk together about looking at trade entries and I'll do some drills on on finding entries pretending to do that in real time people seem to everybody good feedback uh, people like that um, so this was Wyme. most of you know Pacific time I'm here in California so the open the market was actually right here at 630 Pacific time Now, you can see that prior to the open in the pre-market, there was a little bit of a sell-off here, like such, where it looked like it looked like the the equities were going to uh, to tank. And if you were looking at it prior to 6:30, I don't trade in the pre-market, so I don't really pay any attention to this, uh, other than you know support and resistance levels which you would have put lines, you know, if you if you if you do the lines like we like we suggest to do the lines, you know, you would have had support and resistance lines something like, you know, you would have had something down here and you would have had one kind of more or less up in here. This is kind of the range it was in in the pre-market. <clears throat> more or less. So then when the when the open came along, you can see very clearly right here what happened was we got a total reversal and the market popped right up through the both of these resistance swings right here, and the background turned green. Uh, Mid-band and all the bands stair step up. I'm going to take the predictors off just for a second. Um, clearly, this was a, a trend reversal from sideways to down to up. So now we are looking for what? From the open forward, based on this initial pop, we're thinking we're going to be doing what kind of trades? Long, short, or or uh, stand down based on what we see right here let me advance the chart a little bit more it'll help with you with your decision making because this is for this is the first part of making a trade decision right you have to formulate an opinion about what a market is doing and it does one of three things right it's either going up in an uptrend it's going down in a downtrend or it's range bound and going sideways and so each one of those drive dif drives different types of trading decisions in this case the the trend is up, so we are looking to buy pullbacks. We all know that, right? That's one of our mainstays of our trading approach. Is that when you're up in, until while you're in a trend, we are looking to buy to get in on pullbacks. So I let's go ahead and do a quick exercise. Make sure everybody's still awake and engaged here. Let's uh, let's do something together here. Let's do a quick exercise together, and then we'll and then we'll engage the discussion about 
um, trade management. Uh, I like that feedback, Lewis. I saw that. Thank you. Excellent. All right. So here we're we're heading up at the open now. In all honesty, you you, you probably would not have caught this because you can see 629 is here. This is where the initial pop occurred, and then all these bars shotgun right at the open 630. So 629, 630, 630 is still going. So all these bars are shotgunning. You don't normally get that. This is kind of like Nasdaq behavior. Um, you know, it, it's rare to get this on YM, but we got it. It's shotgun. So this was really not tradable. But what I'm going to do, let me advance the chart a little bit. And when you see a trade, you type in a T. And then we'll talk about trade management. Okay? Here we go. Okay, now we're at 631. Advancing the chart. We're, we're reconstructing this morning as if we're looking at it together as a team in real time which we do in the room, of course. There's 6.32, so you're two minutes into the open. Blow up the bars a little bit so it's a little more, it's, it's easier to see here, okay? There's six, uh, 6.33, 6.32. Still at 6.32, still a little bit of a shotgun. Bars are coming out pretty quick. Okay, let me blow it up a little bit more right here. The bar is a little bit bigger. Okay, now we're right here at 6.33. So we're about three minutes into, into the market open here. <clears throat> kind of go bar by bar. Watching YM. Make sure everybody's engaged. Participating in our exercise. Remember, when you see a trade, you type in a T. All right? All right, moving on. Moving on, moving on. Coming up on 634. All right, I'm going to stop right there. So this is really important. Okay, before we manage anything, we have to know where to get in. And I'm still seeing some hesitancy on, I'm guessing, about half of the group. And it could be that you're not engaged in the, in the exercise, and so that might explain why you didn't type in a T, and that's perfectly okay. You may, maybe you're, you know, drinking a Coke or playing with your dog and sort of half-heartedly paying attention, but the exercise is intended to do this. Here you can clearly see that at the, at the 632 uh, point here, we got what was very clearly a double top at 26030 right here. It punch, this is a classic double top where it punches up, has some kind of retracement, holds the stealth line just under line six here, pokes up one more shot, can't get through it. And I love these lines. I love this indicator with these lines. I just love those lines. I use them all the time. And they're a very good visual way to see, in addition to the predictor, of course, predictor, there's predictors up there too, but, but we have that indicator with the lines. I love that. So double top. And so our trading style is that we look for retracements at or around the mid band. And so when you get this pullback right into this area right here, what do we have? So in other words, what, what I'm saying is this. In all likelihood, most of you, maybe all of you, probably missed this move because it's shotgun so quickly. And you probably didn't get any of that at all. And so when it, the market is double topping up here, what are we saying to ourselves when it's doing this? And we try to help you as best as we can in the room. We are saying things like, in other words, how do we prepare ourselves to enter the market? What are we thinking about when the market's up here? Well, I'll help you out because we're kind of just kind of getting started. We're thinking, hey. It looks like we're in a pretty good uptrend here. I'm looking to buy to get long, and I can't wait for this thing to pull back somewhere into support. Maybe it'll be at or around the mid-band, and when it does, I'm going to buy it. Right? This is what we're saying to ourselves when the market is up here. In other words, what we're doing, see what I mean? 
See the markets run up? Uptrend, we're looking for a pullback. Mid-band sitting right here. So in my mind, that's what I do. That's how I mentally prepare myself to get into a trade. I'm not looking at here. I'm really not paying too much attention to that. I'm, oh, it, from a sense of, you know, sure, it's looking double toppy, but I, I already missed this. I've got to wait till it gets back down into here. I'm looking to buy down here. But the, the important takeaway here is that you're doing that ahead of time. We want to get out of the reactionary mode where we just sort of, you know, I don't want to say lackadaisical, but you say, well, you know, when it pulls back, let's see where it goes to, and then maybe I'll look for a trade. The more prudent approach is to plan ahead. And so that's exactly what happened here. Now, there was a group of you, a small group, that typed in a T when these bars formed right here. And that was good. I think I showed these two or three bars first. And there was a sl slew of T's that came in. And I want to applaud you early uh, T tappers, whatever. That to see this trade as it was starting to unfold. Now, then I paused and I blew up the chart and these bars formed and then a whole other slew of you typed in, typed in T's. However, that being said, there's a whole group of you that didn't type in anything. Now, I, I'm asking a question to those of you who did not type in a T here. And then there was a small group I want to mention who typed in T's when these bars are forming up here. And I don't want to insult anybody. I don't want you to feel, you know, left out or negative comments or anything. But I have to tell you that, that the trade is occurring here. We have to get ourselves to see that the trade is here. If you start getting in trades when it's up here, people are already taking scalpy coin off up here. Now, let's speak to trade management. For those of you who saw the trade or see it now, where might we want to put our initial target? Oh, I see some of you are eating some dinner and watching. Okay, don't worry about it. Hey, listen, I'm not commenting if you didn't type in a T. I try to do as interactive as we can on these exercises, and I realize some of you can participate and some can't. It's not a big deal. But if you were going to – planning ahead, we see we wicked under the, right here at the mid-band in 05, 04, right here and we're getting in, yes, where is our initial target? In other words, if we put two lot on here, so that's what we want to do. We want to get to a place in our trade. You can still trade one. There's nothing wrong with it. But we want to trade, when we think about trading, especially a $5 instrument like Weimer and, and, uh, and uh, Russell, we want to try to trade, put this right on here, two lot if you can. Now, I wouldn't suggest going to, to uh, if you can. If you have a very modest trading account or you're still learning, you should be doing this in SIM or just put one on because you're just learning how to get in. Yeah, now, if you have to, the idea is this. Just from a conceptual point of view, what we're always looking to try to do is get an initial pop on a trade. Generally, that's going to be anywhere from 6 to 10 ticks, depending on your instrument. We want to locate the nearest swing, which in this case is right here at 2930, the double top, right? We want to fade that by a few ticks, sometimes as many as five or six, and we're going to have our initial uh, initial uh, target be somewhere right in here. Okay, does everybody understand that? That is where we would more or less take a trade off, take a take a. Uh, pull one contract off and get our stop up close tight to break e excuse me break even now let's talk about what happens here let's analyze what happens on this trade Okay, good. Some of you saw that. Some of you see that. Okay, so we're gonna we're fading. We're looking for a target up here, you know, uh, somewhere between 20 and 25 to pull off our scalpy, and then tighten our stop as quickly as possible. Now I'm gonna advance this chart. I'm gonna blow these bars up, and we're gonna watch this trade unfold together. Here we go. So we're long. You're either long from here where it bounced on the mid band, or you're long from one of these bars that closed up on a bar close, or you're long from here. 
by hook or by crook, you're long, right? All right, so let's advance it. Here's some bars. Here's some bars coming at us. Here's some bars coming at us. I'm going to pause. Now you're at 634. Now, when you when this bar right here forms, after all these yellow bars sitting here, should we start to become concerned? Let me give you another bar. How about that bar? What do you think? Let me ask it differently. When when these bars formed right here, and they did not get to your target here, what is going through your head? Uh, let me suggest some uh, some thoughts. Um, it's running out of gas. There's not enough buying to push it up as far as I want it to even pull a scalp off. I might want to start thinking about pulling my pulling my stop up closely. I might want to think about hitting the close button. It seems like it's going to check support one more time. Now let's let's pl let's pl pan this out. Comes all the way down below the mid band down into there. Now, let's do some quick math. Let's say you got filled on this bar right here. And that was located at, um, let's say you didn't get in down here at the mid band. Let's say you didn't get in until like 12. And it came all the way to 96. So this is an 18 tick retracement. Let me ask you a question now, still remaining with become, being interactive, so we're all participating together. How, how, how much is your initial stop on when you trade YM? Just type in a number. How tight is your initial stop when you trade YM? If you trade YM, any instrument for that. What's your initial stop tend to be? How tight or loose do you make it? Just type in a number. I see a lot of 12s. I see a 10. I see a 7 to 10. 7 is pretty tight. Try for 6. A lot of tw Almost everybody's a 12. So here's the thing. When you get filled here at 12, then your 12 tick stop is going to be at or around 00 even, which is going to be right here. Now, here's why I ask this question. Do you have to wait for a market to come all the way back and take your full stop out? No. If you begin to observe the fact that this trade is in trouble right here because it did not get up here and you're seeing bars closing down back through the mid band, you get in there and you whatever, if you have um, object trader, however you're trading this market, stop, close, flatten, get out. Yes, exactly, Lewis. Hit close and get out. You know, this way what's going to happen is, sure, you take a pop. Maybe it's four, maybe it's six, maybe it's eight ticks, but it's not the full 12. Now, that being said, let's talk about what we do subsequently to that. And this is probably one of the hardest things to do in, um, in, uh, in trading is when you take a stop or you close out a trade is then getting back in because mentally you got dinged right? Sure, it's early. It's, you know, it's five minutes into the trading session. You got dinged. You're down a little bit. You're not happy with that. But what do you got to do? You got to get right back on the horse and start saying to yourself, I better start looking for another trade so I can make this money back and get profitable. Yes. Now I'm going to go ahead and advance the chart. And when you think you see another trade come along, you type in another T. Remember, we just got stopped out, and we closed. We closed the trade, so we're out. We're flat. We got out on. Uh, you know, we saw that it was weak. Maybe we took a pop of like you know four, six, eight ticks on two contracts. We're down. What would that be? Like sixty bucks, maybe eighty bucks. I'm gonna advance this chart, and when you think you see another trade reentry, you type in a T. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Now remember, this is still pretty early. We're at six thirty-five in the morning. We're looking at YM. Type in a T when you think you see a trade, a re-entry trade. 
Okay, now we're at 635, coming up on 636. Remember, this is an uptrend, so we're only taking long trades, right? We're not getting short yet. This is not a short background. This is a long background. We're buying retracements. You type in a T when you see the trade reentry set up. We're looking to get long. Still at 635. The bars are coming in. Here's 636. All right, I'm going to stop it right there. All right. Okay. Let me let me uh, pause for a second here. Let me let me pause for a second. Some of you. Um, typed in a T when these bars formed right here. A couple of you said that you would box it and take it right in here, which is good. These bars right here. Now remember, if you're if you're nervous taking these types of trades when you see red bars under the mid band, I can understand that. You can put it all the way up here. So if you don't want to get whipped around, you want to see a close above the mid band. I understand that. That's perfectly acceptable. That was the trade entry. That would have been probably tough to take that because you just got stopped out. And you'd have to immediately rebox and get back in. So that would have been tough. However, the market did sit right here for about two full minutes. And that was a textbook box. And a lot of you typed in a T here. And I can understand why you might, might not have taken that here again because of the stop out issue uh, and the fact that you are, it is red bars, but you are at the mid band. And this was the re-entry right here. This would be the early one. I'll give credit for some of you for seeing that. And then the actual T would have occurred right in here for trade entry. Long. And the reason I keep saying long is that is that I get a sense that some of you are nervous in the fact that you think that, that this support level here is going to get broken and it's going to go lower, right? Is that fair? Is that a fair statement? You know, Charles, I didn't type in a T there. I saw there was a little box forming. I saw it pretty clearly. But you know what? I was just nervous this thing's going to tank and go short and flip and get all manner down in here. And now I'm trying to look for an entry down here. And the question I have for you is do, do we care if it does that? Does that matter to us? The answer is no. No, it doesn't matter to us. Because we don't care about the bottom of the box. That doesn't mean anything to us. We're not shorting here. It would be different if you said, well, you know, I'm going to box it and I will take shorts. Then you could be prone to a little bit of a head fake here where the market would come down, bip down into here, get you short, and then flip in your face because it is a long background. All I'm trying to do is alleviate any kind of fear that you might have of it going lower because it doesn't matter. It's a long uptrend. You're long only here, right? All we care about is getting long. Now, look at what this trade turned into. Remember that scalp from earlier? Our little 10 tick scalp? Bam, you got it right there. There's your scalpy. Now, after we pull the scalp off, what do we do with our initial stop? We would have one, our initial 12 tick stop would be somewhere down probably in here. So here's our rule set. Let me continue with this two lot discussion here. Trade two lot, two, which is two contracts on any instrument that you can, dot, 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 and our goal is to get off the initial scalp. Initial scalp, which is that 10 to trade, 10 to uh, 8, 10, 12 ticks at or near a swing. If you're long, we looked at that, right? Uh, and then. Next, what do we do? What do we do with our trail stop, the initial stop, once we hit our, we pop our scalpy? Do we just leave it down there at 12 ticks? You know, our initial stop, this line right here, we got filled here on one of these bars right here. Our initial stop sitting down here. We pull the scalpy off, it's sitting up here. Scalpy's off. Do we just leave that? Let me pull this up here. 
what do we do with this initial target? Now, now if you're using Object Trader, it will automatically do it. I see some bring it up to break evens. Now here, I want to issue a word of caution in this area. Okay, there are many times, and we'll look at some examples of this tonight before we wrap up. Where let's say hypothetically you're filled long on this bar right here, this one that closed just outside the box, um, right there. right here you're long right and you're so that would have been right just under 10 so your initial stop would be down at 90 10 at 98 or something maybe if you pull it tight to 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 it really is a function of what the market is doing now i'm not trying to be evasive when i say that what i mean is this how many times have you seen a market do this it'll go ahead it'll pop up check a swing and then, bam, NASDAQ was notorious for this. And Russell does it sometimes, too. And then it comes back, you know, within a tick or two or even a little deeper of where you got in and challenges this area right here. So what I'm saying is you have to use a little bit of judgment. Now, if a market is exhibiting this behavior where it's where it's very, you know, pops up and then precipitously pulls back in your face and you got to stop even, you know, you got your stop up here sitting at break even or tick above it. It comes right, it just wicks where you got in, bam, you stop out, and then boom, the thing turns into a 40 tick trade. So what I'm suggesting is, is take it, take the initial stop. Take the initial stop. Initial stop. To within two ticks of your trade entry. That way you're giving it a little bit of wiggle room, right? You're giving it a little bit of wiggle room. Now, that's here again, that's a judgment call. If the, if the market just takes off like a bird and doesn't really even look back, well, then you can go ahead and start getting that trail up fast. See here? See how Stealth and Line 6 are kind of holding? So then you just, you just trail, just trail, 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 and go ahead. In this case, it didn't come back. It didn't check this at all. So if you had done the two-tick rule after the thing, after your initial pop, you know, if you're doing it manually, you would have dragged it up. Object Trader, of course, if you set it up properly, is doing this automatically for you, right? Everybody following that? This is our approach after we get in. This is getting us to what we call close to a, a free trade. A free trade is where no matter what the market does, you're going to make a profit, right? Because you got a 10, 12 tick scalp off. Even if it took your initial stop to two ticks behind, behind your initial entry, Uh, you know, and then you're out. All right, let's advance this. Uh, let's advance this chart and see what what happened with this trade. We're starting to break up through here. Now, in terms of trail stops, it's a little bit art and science. Okay, what do I mean by that? For me personally, I try to split. It really is a function of how how fast and how rapid the volatility is unfolding in a market, how fast it's going up, how deep it's pulling back. Each market's a little bit different. Sometimes we'll call out tight stops. Generally, in a long trade, that's going to be right here around line six. So you would, find, in the case of the long trade, you would track line six up, and you could fade that by a tick. So you can go, up, say, a tick or two behind 28. So in this case here, your stop would look something like this. Now. Some of you split the difference and go, you'll fade that 28 line six and you'll go in between stealth. Here's a stealth line and, and line six. So for you that are, are fading, you, you know, you, you can see here that you would be, you know, in between the two. And those of you who use stealth, give it more wiggle room. That, that tends to be the loose trade. That tends to be the loose stop at or around or under stealth. So you can see as the market moves up, I'm going to go ahead and continue to 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 uh, to move the market here uh, or advance the market. Um, comes up, comes up all the way up to 46. And in this case here, here is the three trail stop approaches. Trail stop one at line six, trail stop two in between 
in Trail Stop 3 uh, located at or around a tick or two within the stealth. So as you're moving up, the stops are moving up. Now you can program this to do it automatically in Object Trader, in which case you don't have to worry about doing it. It just will automatically move it. Right? If you're doing it manually, that's how you would do it. So you can see there's a pretty good difference. There's like a five tick difference between the, the, the tight and the loose. Now, when this bar closed right here, the tight stopper got stopped out. When this came down, the medium stopper stopped out. And when that came down, they're all you're all done. Everybody's out. Now, that was a lot to give up because here you entered here. So, you know, if you think about it, here's your entry. And the tight stopper got out here, the medium stopper got out here. And so you wind up giving a lot back. Now, there is a trade-off between putting in, let's take a look at how far this market moved. Arguably, it went from 05-ish. That's not where we got filled. We got it in 09 or 10 even. But 05-ish all the way to 45. 46. So how many ticks was this entire move right here? About 40, right? Now let me ask you a question. Do you think it's better to analyze your instrument and put in fixed targets that are located at or around where they typically tend to pull back from? Let me use a specific example. I've noticed on YM that after it moves about 40 ticks, you're going to get some kind of retracement. So my question to you is this. Are you better off putting in a target at or around the 40 ticks and just getting out, or are you better off trailing the stop and getting out when it pulls back? T for target, TS for trail stop. What are your thoughts? Get out at the 40 ticks. Bam, you're done. Target, T. Or are you choking off a bigger run like you got over here? See this huge run over here? You're choking off a big run. Are you better Are you better off doing some trail stops? Let it pull back, and then if it resumes, the move. Hmm. Good. Bruce, that's right. You have to know the average move on your instrument. And you, if you trade an instrument enough, you're going to know. You're going to get a feel for that instrument. Okay, after it moves 40 ticks, like Norm, it's going to pull back. I don't know how much it's going to pull back, but it's going to pull back. Dennis says, know your instruments. A lot of you are putting in targets. Daniel is trade uh, trail stop. Jim wants to trail. David D., you can always get back in. Depends on how fast it's moving. Good. Yeah, so it's a function of your instrument, how well you know your instrument, how it behaves to those numbers. If you find that 40 ticks is good and you're happy with 40 ticks, peel it off. You can always get back in on a pullback. Good. All right, let's look at one more Weimer trade here, and then I want to get on to Russell before we run out of time, okay? I don't want to spend all morning on this, but I think it's important to... All right, we're going to do one. Let's do a couple more of these real quick, and then we'll go over to uh, to Russell. I'm going to do this fairly quickly. Here we just stopped out. I'm going to advance this chart. You type in. Let's do it again. We're going to, you're going to type in a T when you see a trade. Okay? We're, we're watching. We're at 637 now. We're seven minutes into the market open on YM. Hold on, I'm going to find my cursor here. All right, there we go. Advancing the chart, type in a T when you see a trade. We just stopped out. We're out. We either hit a target or we stopped out on the on trade number one. We missed this big run over here. Or maybe caught part of it. Anyway, so now we're looking for another trade. 637. Six thirty eight. Six thirty eight coming up on six thirty nine. Blow up the bars a little bit more for you. Come on.
coming up on 639. I'm going to pause right, stop right there. Now, some of you have typed in, uh, there, there was a small handful of you, I, I think it was, I think it was like two, two or three of you had typed in a T um, when, when these bars were forming right here. Now, it depends on how you box this and when, if and when you put a box on it. Um, you know, if you put a tight box here, for instance, the close of this bar might have got, actually gotten you long. For me personally, this is just a little too shallow of a pullback. And um, some of you typed in a T when these bars formed right here. And that's correct. In my view, the trade was actually set up right here. And some of you didn't type in anything at all. So either you're asleep or you're not paying attention or you don't care. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, the more you participate, the better you're going to get. That's the whole reason for these exercises. We try to lob these scenarios out for you so, so that in real time tomorrow morning when you see them, you know what to do. You know what to, how to react. Every single person in here tonight should have typed in a T when that, those bars formed right there. Every single one of you should have typed in a T right here. All of you. And if you, so if you didn't, then, you know, it's up to you, but that's, that's what you're looking for. That's, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm showing you textbook trades here that you should just jump right off the chart into your lap. <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I don't want to diss the, the PM meter, uh, uh, Mindy, you know, I, I don't, you know, I, I, here, I want you, everybody take this with a grain of salt. We have a lot of indicators, right? We got background colors, we got bar colors, we got predictors, power meters, all manner of things on here. Stealth lines, line six, line two, you know, mid band. It, you have to. We are trying to show how to use all these tools and, and interpret the indicators. But it's it, it's it, it's up to everybody, the individual, to embrace the this what the visual of what you're seeing here, and then pull the trigger, use the tools to get in and take the trade. So what I'm trying to say here is that I don't really even look at the power meter. Me personally, I'm not looking at that at all. In my in my personal style of trading, I am focused 100% on price action and where it is. And when these bars form at the mid man, I throw a, I throw an object trader box on it and I'm enable long and I'm looking to enter the trade right in here. Okay, that's just me personally. Now, if you find that the power meter and other things help you, uh, predictors, other types of parts of tools that we have, and it helps you see trades better, all power to you. Use those. Yeah, but you want to keep it as simple as possible. Don't start putting other ancillary thing uh, indicators on here because that's going to start throwing you up. Um, Brian is asking a, a question, and I, I'm going to go ahead and answer it. Do you ignore the predictors too? Um, I, I, I actually, you see what I'm doing in here, how I toggle them on and off? Throughout the course of a morning, that's what I normally do. I don't completely ignore them. But when I feel that they're relevant, here. In fact, let me let me advance the chart, and I'll show you where I, I feel that the uh, that the uh, predictors become much more relevant. Watch what hap happens to this market right here. So here you got your long trade. We can see you get your scalp off because it comes right back to the top of of the of the current range it's in. You get your scalpy off here. You tighten your stop up. It's holding line six. It's holding stealth. Pops up a little higher. Takes this swing out. So you're trailing. You know your trail's coming up. Just like the other trade, right? Here's our initial trade. We bip it up to two ticks from our entry, and then we trail, right? Trailing it on up, trailing it on up, and then more or less when one of these bars formed right here, we're actually out. Okay, so here's your stop out over here. So you got the scalp off. Scalp E1 came off, probably somewhere in here, and then, uh, and then you trail up and you get out almost about the same place. Now, I'm going to go ahead and advance the chart. I'm, I'm going to go through the next 20 minutes fairly quickly, and then, I will, and then we're going to get off of uh, Weimer here. Okay, you see another trade here. Now, I'm going to pause right there. There's 643. What is the market doing now, and how are the predictors helping you? At 643, we've had two trades. We've had three trades. We had one that stopped out, this initial trade here. We had trade entry here for the long, trade two. 
made money, got the scalpy, got the trail. Trade two, re-entry, scalpy, got the trail. And now what are we doing? What is, here, let me advance it a little bit more. And how are the predictors helping you? Are we still heading up? What do you think? Background's green. I see a lot of blue bars. What do you think? We, are we still heading up? Simple yes or no question. Are we heading up? Green background. All right, I'll keep advancing it. Keep advancing it. What do you think? All right, so here's how I would characterize this, and here's how the predictors do help. And, and this is why you would want to toggle them on and, on and off and not completely ignore them. Notice how th th there are several breadcrumb clues on this, this chart that should be helping you. First of all, we can see that all the predictors are more or less in, in the top and the bottom in the same spot. Right? We can see these lines that appear at the top of the trading range, and then we see where it pulls down into support. Yeah, we're range bound. Most of you t typed in sideways to up. So this is what we would characterize as sideways to up. So you are in a range. Technically, you're still heading up in terms of an, of an upward movement. In other words, we're not shorting the market, right? We're not shorting the market. We're still looking to buy. So we would say in sideways to up markets, there's no change in our trade entry. We are still taking longs, yes? Still taking long trades. However, the slight modification is is that we want to identify our our scalp trade needs to be taken off at or near the swing that we see at the top, and I'll show you in a second, uh, and then and then uh, and then tighten the trail. So what that means is that we're essentially trading the long side of the range, right? We're buying support. So these are all buys down here. You know, when it, and you can use the OT to do this, right? Here's here's a buy right here. Here's a buy right there. Arguably, there's a buy right over here. You can put a line on the chart where support's sitting right in here. Anytime she gets down into here, she's not quite getting to get into the mid band, but these are all nice long trades. You get your scalp out. You pull your scalp out at the top, tighten your stop, get out. Get back in, tighten the stop, get out. Get in, back up to the top. So you're buying these pullbacks, and if you're putting two lot on, you are waiting for a break of the market to take this out and start running up which would mean which would constitute trend continuation to the upside so we just don't give up i don't think it's it's a, it's a, a prudent move to just give up and throw up your hands and say oh well you know this is pretty sideways to up i'm just going to stand down you you should still be looking to get in here very little risk let's look at continue to look here we start to pop you start to get a, uh, a sense what, what I mean by pop let me explain what I'm talking about here you can clearly see resistance was very solid right here and this finally popped it getting up into the range of these predictors up here right so it is at this point at 646 we are starting to get a sense that what might happen with the emergence of this pop right here we're starting to feel a little more confident she's going to break up yes because she's already done it right here so if you missed all what I'm trying, where I'm going with this is if you had missed all these poppies in the range, it's okay. But when it pops it, our little spidey sense needs to pop up, and we need to say to ourselves, "Ooh, wait a minute! Oh, stand down, Big Jim. This could be a legit pullback, and we get a pop and a run." So let's see what happens. It's chopping around still, chopping around. All right, now look what happens right here. Range is tightening. You get one more little bit of yellow bars at, at, the, at a higher support level right in here. See it? Sideways to up, so we're buying. 
if you'd missed all these, if you didn't miss them, you, you'd already made some money. You made great money here. All these pops. Popper, poppy, popper. Now, let's see what happens. Stand by. Stand by one. All right, you put your box on. Get your two lot in. Get your two lot in. You get filled long on that bar right there. Scalp trade is up near um, right here. Scalp trades comes off anywhere up in here. You're fading the 60 swing, right? There's your scalpy trade right here. We get we one off, and now you're trailing on the one lot. Got one lot left, and you're trailing it, right? Okay, here we go. She's she's hitting that swing. She's popping the swing. Our trail's coming up. We're managing our trade, yes. Our initial 12 stick st uh, tick stop was just down here somewhere, depending on how we put it. We're filled long from here on this bar, yes? Initial stop is down here, 12 ticks or 10 or whatever it is. You have your settings in your OT, and you start to trail. You come up two ticks from your entry, long on this bar right here. Right? Remember, our, we pop our scalpy, we get our stop up tight, or have OT do it for you. Everybody watching? Now we start to advance the trade. After that, it pulls back, takes off. Look what a trade this thing turned into be. Look at this. Now, a word here. Here, I want to. This is really important, okay? Before we run out of time, I want to talk about this. What is the difference between this trade and these other two trades over here? These trades and these trades right here. All these trades. See all the boxes? All these boxes are trades. Every single box here is a long trade. Except for that one. That wasn't one. Right? Here's all your, this is all your long trades. So looking at all these long trades, what's the difference between the, all these boxes and this trade that you're in right now, right here? It's running. What did we say before we saw this? That is your trend continuation. That is your breakout. That is your run. So you want to have, so now that the market is running and you're up like 50 ticks, is that the time to really suck your stops up real tight to stealth? What do you think? Here, so you have you have two, looking at our other, remember we had the stop setups over here? Super tight, medium and loose. When you get a big run like this, do you want to go super tight, medium, or a little bit looser? Yes, looser. Does everybody see the difference? When you are when you are sideways to up or in somewhat of a trend, but it's hitting resistance and pulling back, you get your st stops up tight so you don't give the whole trade back because then you're looking to get back in. In the case where a market is running, you got to leave them a little bit looser. You got to leave them looser. See, each time when it comes back, it just checks, kisses line six and bounces. It did it right here. And again, it did it right here. So now you have a little bit looser stop. See, you're following stealth. You're following line six. It's still grinding. It's still running. It's still running. It's still running until here. This trade could have been one and done for your morning right here. You could have missed all other trades that happened, everything before this point at 6.46 a.m. Pacific time, and caught this one trade, and you very well could have been done. Let's say you got the 10 ticker off here, and then your runner went from 45 to, I don't know, 41. 98 ticks plus the 10 tick scalpy, 108 ticks. This trade would have been somewhere around 500 bucks on two lots. Most of it made a course in the runner. And that doesn't count any of the stuff over here. None of the scalps in the range, none of those. Of course, you see we had this trade right here, which made some money. We had this trade right here, which made some money. Let's say you didn't get any of those. I mean, you could have been up going into that at least two, three to 100 bucks, maybe more. We had the stop out here that didn't work out, so you got popped, remember? I mean, very easily with two lot, you could have been up seven, 750 or more. All before 7 o'clock Pacific. 
That's coin kaching city, Lewis. That's exactly what that is. When we talk about one or two and done, this is precisely what we're referring to. And so when we come up on 7 o'clock and we stop out of this trade, you hear things in the room to the effect of, okay, there was a 100 tick run. You could be done. If you caught part or all of that, lock it down and go into sim. By the way, just a quick show of hands. How many of you actually do that? How many of you actually have targets and um, goals for your trading and you respect them and when you hit those and you make your money, you stop trading and go into sim. You don't keep risking your money. How many of you follow that rule? Anybody in here? Show of hands. That one rule that we talk about all the time. Nicely green, turn off the machine. Now you've heard that a thousand times, right? If you're at your goal, lock it down. You hear that every morning. Sounds like a broken record. <laughs> Doesn't it? Then it says, I have a whole trade plan. Good for you. Yes, everybody does. You stop. Okay, perfect. That's the way to get it done. Great record. Okay. All right. Let's let's go. Um, let me. We're getting long in the tooth here. Um, let me see if I can get a Russell chart up before we run out of time, real quick. Here, hold on. Uh, I was having trouble loading that puppy earlier. Let's see if we can get that done here. I'm gonna get her done. Okay, I'm gonna try to convert this chart over to uh, to uh, Russell. Stand by, please. If it locks up, we might have to bag and see how far we can get on this. Let's, let's see if we can just look for a couple of quick trades on here together before we run out of time. Yeah, it's very encouraging to see everybody in here has, has goals and targets and things that you try to achieve every day. And then when you're done, you go into sim. I, I, I just That's so encouraging to see that. That's just most excellent. All right, Russell loading, stand by. Give it another minute or two here. There we go. All right. Big moves after hours. Anybody know why? Why was there so much movement after hours today? I'm not going to show it. It's like a million bars. Any ideas? Anybody paying attention to the economic situation any kind of news what kind of news came out anybody know market shot up and then tanked anything major going on uh earnings reports from the big boys maybe apple and google that's right tony you got it so I wouldn't be – now, coupled with non-farm payroll, I expect tomorrow to be a pretty big day. I really do. You know, you got a lot of things fueling volatility right now. And it's uh, – you know, you got earnings, big big, big high-tech companies, earnings coming in. Um, all right, stand by here. Let's go back to 630 on Roosty Bird. All right, stand by. Now, if we were to observe something right at the open here on Russell, what would it be? Let me help you out. I'll put a let me put a uh, let me expand the chart and put a hor uh, horizontal line in where the open is. 6:30 was right here. So the pre-market was right here. Here's the pre-market, and here's the open. What's our observation? What's Russell doing right at the open? Here, I'll give you some more bars. I'll help you out. Go up to 632. Range bound, range town, sideways to up. Good. So what do we do? What do we do? Just like Gary did in the room. We put a line up where there's some resistance, right? And we put some lines down where there's support. And we know our rules are that as long as it remains within the confines of the lines that we are said to be in a range. And so we have to decide how we're going to trade it. Is it, is it usually a good idea to take mid-band trades in ranges? Before I advance the chart, what do you think? When you're in a range and the mid-band's right in the middle, is it a good idea to put boxes there and trade? Is that how you trade a range? 
Let me advance the chart and see how you want to answer that. Let me help you out. Let me advance this chart, and then you, you tell me what you think. I already see a bunch of answers. Let's go ahead and go through the first 20 minutes of market action on Russell. Okay, it's popping up. It's pulling back to support. Dinking around the mid-band. Popping up through the top. Let's move this line. Support more or less in here. Popping down. Chuck, jumping around the mid-band. Coming down, checking support. Check it one more time, popping up to the mid-band, popping up to the thing. Yeah, so, you know, here's the thing. It, it really is a function of how large the range is and how close support and resistance are to the top and bottom of the range. What I mean is this. For instance, let's look at one of these mid-band trades here, like this one right here that got long. You know, it cleared the top, and technically speaking, there's enough meat on the bones to get a trade here. Now, to the short side, not so much. Because once you get filled on a bar close, I mean, you know, you're hitting the bottom and it's right back in your face. Okay, so not real, a real good idea there. So you have to assess the range. There are cases in a, in a, in a range, a very large range, where mid-band trades make sense. If the, if the range is much tighter, say if the range narrows down to something like this, where you only got a few ticks between you and the uh, support and resistance in the mid-band, not a good, by the time you get filled, you get in and out, there's just no meat on the bone there. Generally speaking, mid-band trades are not good in ranges. So what that means is then you're buying and selling the extremes. So it's the complete opposite of trend trading, right? Trend trading is we're looking at thrust, retracement to the mid-band, buy support, get long, just like we looked at on Weimar, right? Thrust, back to the mid-band, get short. In this case here, you have to identify the swings and trade the extremes. And some, you know, look, I've asked this question a thousand times. Some of you like that and are good at it. You're good at range-bound trading. You can pick these things off as so you see support. Some instruments are better at rate trading ranges than others. If they, What I mean by that is if they ha have support and resistance that's clean and clear so you can see where to get in and it respects it, in this case here, you're sideways to up, so these pullbacks are really buys. You're buying down here. I wouldn't necessarily be shorting the top. I'd be taking profit up there is how I would have personally approached this, this range. As I recall, I don't know that I took any Russell trades in the first like 20 minutes of trading. I didn't personally really like this setup. I think Gary was calling some trades in here. I don't remember. I think there were some trades called in here, but eventually look what happens. You pop out through the top and you get a little runner. So in that sense, it was similar to that last trade that we looked at on YM, remember? Where it was in a range and you were buying pullbacks, remember, just like Weimer, and then you got the pop and the runner, the 100 tick runner on Wyme. Well, you would have had a similar condition here. There was actually two shots at it before it did this pop. There was another, there was a box where it sat right here, and I think we might have called this one. If you didn't catch this one, there was definitely one right here. All right. Uh, it, it really depends on the range, uh, Lewis. I, I, most of you know the two instruments that I focus uh, uh, on are uh, YM and the Russell. I'd say probably 90, 85, 90 plus percent of my trades are there. I watch gold and I watch oil. And if there's a really just a killer good setup, I'll, I'll go ahead and take one of those. No problem. I'll call it in the room and I'll take it. Um, I'm not really fond of ranges, truth be told. I'm not very good at them. I know that about myself. So um, let me go ahead and turn the recorder off. I think we're pretty much at a wrap. Uh, hold on. Where's the recorder button?